just realized I forgot to turn my light on. That's a little better. Okay. Hello. I'm Amanda. I am the flute player of this lovely group. The one of the admins of the Florida Support Community. It is nice to have you here. Today I am going to be talking all about how to get a great sound on your instrument and giving you three tips. This includes, at the end, a homework assignment that is really simple and easy to do. It'll take you five minutes and you can go ahead and do that um, anytime after you watch this video just to get your tone sounding better and your sound overall just like improved. So let's get into it. The three things you need to know in order to improve your tone. And What's crazy is Anna and I have taught this subject so many times. We have so many videos in Woodman Academy about this. We've talked about it in multiple YouTube videos and multiple lives here. And it always comes down to these same three topics. Like, sure, there are other things that you could potentially do to improve your tone, but like these are the three big ones. Like, if you don't have all three of these in order, like, and totally making sense and totally working for you, like, you're probably going to have some troubles with, like, intonation, with, um, like, your sound, like, getting fuzzy or airy, and just not be, like, super happy overall, or maybe you'll have problems with your breathing, stuff like that. So, let's get into it. The three things. First thing is, you need to have great posture. And I know this sounds like really almost, almost a little irritating. Like, ugh, you know, you're telling me I have to have perfect posture. Like I just want to do my scale exercises and practice all of that to improve my sound. But like, I can't tell you how many people I've taught who practice hours and hours, all these crazy exercises. And then the one thing that they wanted to improve on still doesn't get fixed. And all it takes is for us to adjust like one posture thing in a lesson and all of a sudden they sound great. So posture really does get in the way. So what do you need to know about posture? You need to make sure that your posture fits your exact instrument. By the way, if you're just hopping on here, say hi. I'm gonna try and open the comments so I can see you guys. Um, but welcome to my video. So anyway, your posture is specific to your instrument. Clarinet posture is going to be different than sax posture, is going to be different than flute posture, oboe is going to be different than all three of those. And you know, there are multiple types of clarinets, flutes, and saxophones. So your posture might differ depending on what instrument you play. So it's really important that you get knowledge from an expert <laughs> about how your posture looks, what you need to change, because to be honest with you, like sometimes it takes an outside opinion to really tell you. Um, I always recommend to my students to look in a mirror. So when we're working on posture things and lessons, like just so you're able to see yourself and see whether or not you're doing the things that you need to do. Um, but really good posture and the homework assignment at the end relates to this, so stay tuned for that. All right, so that's the first thing you need for a great sound, posture. Second thing is embouchure or mouthpiece setup. That needs to be working for you as well. And again, this is another thing that's different for each instrument and another reason why we have separate videos in Woodman Academy for flute, clarinet, sax, oboe, and bassoon. <laughs> Even bassoon and oboe are really different. So having that embouchure and posture set up is going to really help you have a great sound. So when it comes to your embouchure, one thing to keep in mind is that you wanna make sure, and this goes for all instruments, that you're not tensing up too much. Having too tense an embouchure for flute will make our high notes sound very squeaky and they'll crack. It messes with our intonation. Um, if you have like a single reed instrument or a double reed instrument, like how relaxed your mouth is or how tense it is affects how your reed responds to your air. So all of that is super important. And if you have questions about it, again, just like the posture thing, make sure that you have an outside opinion. 
somebody who really has played your instrument for a long time, really has the sound that you want, and really knows what they're talking about, giving you advice, looking at what you might doing might be doing wrong, looking at what you might improve, looking at what you're already doing well so that you know what to continue doing, just to help you level up your sound even more. Um, I think we had another person pop in, so hello. Make sure you say hi in the comments so I can see who's watching. Um, okay, third thing. So we've already covered two. We've covered the posture, we've covered the embouchure and the mouthpiece setup. And the third thing, breathing, our favorite thing. We've done multiple master classes on this topic. It's a hot one. This is a very hot topic, especially for flute players. Um, and for oboe players, for the opposite reason. <laughs> so flute players, we tend to have this issue where we get not enough air. And we're breathing all the time. And we're just like running out of air. Or we're feeling lightheaded. Or we're getting dizzy. And it's because the flute requires the most air of any wind instrument. Especially the woman instruments. Like flute and tuba are like number one in terms of like how much air you need. And then oboes are running into this problem where they always have too much air. And they're like, how do I let air out? Can I like breathe out of my nose while I'm playing and stuff? So yeah, we all have these different breathing problems and challenges and quirks and everything. So making sure that you have a really relaxed, open posture that allows for breathing is important. So these are the how the three elements of tone sort of relate to each other. Um, but let me give you a few tips on breathing because this is going to apply to all instruments. So think about a open vowel. I like to think of O when you're breathing. So just try that with me. It's like a Darth Vader breath. We make like Darth Vader noises and see how much air you, you let in when you're doing that. Now try it like a more closed vowel, like E. For me, like, I feel like I can let in just as much air, but it goes in way more slowly. It takes like forever to breathe in when my mouth is tight. Like that. So, there you go. The O, the Darth Vader breath, the O vowel is going to be better for breathing. So when you take a deep breath in to like go play your instrument, have that open vowel shape. And when you take a really good breath in, you're going to notice like your chest expands, like the sides of your torso expand, your belly will expand. And the trick is to allow yourself to do that. A lot of times, like when I'm in an ensemble, like, or, you know, this may be just like a issue with me and like, I don't know, other women, <laughs> but like sometimes I feel like, you know, I have to like clench my abs and just like sort of stay small and I don't take big enough breaths when I'm around other people. Even when I'm in a lesson or something, like I'll find that I just like take a mini breath um, just because I'm tensing up and like, you know, I'm trying to be all perfect and stuff. But you got to just like Relax your belly, relax your shoulders, relax your face, sit up straight and just breathe in <sighs> like no one else is there. So make sure you're staying relaxed so that you can breathe. Um, and if you want to learn more about breathing and learn some exercises, we actually have a couple of master classes on this topic. So just send us um, a message if you have breathing questions and we can connect you to the right space where you can find out all of those exercises and all of that. It would take me like 45 minutes to talk about it all. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that today. Um, but it is all in the breathing masterclass, which, um, we can connect you guys with if you want to. So those are the three things that you need to make sure you have in working order, optimized for you and your body and your needs and your instrument. Breathing, embouchure and mouthpiece setup, and what is the first thing I said? Posture. Okay, so here is your lovely homework assignment. So 
I'm actually gonna go against the wall for this. Uh, let me see, I'm in my new house. So I have lots of walls that I can stand against. Okay, so your homework assignment is to stand. Do, can you guys still hear me? All right, I don't think I'm covering the speaker too much with my hands, but um, your homework assignment is to stand against the wall. So you're literally, I'm gonna try and hold the camera so you can see. You're gonna literally put your shoulders against the wall and your back against the wall and your head against the wall. Everything's gonna be like pressed against the wall. You can also lie down on the floor if that's more comfortable. Um, and you're going to stand there with everything against the wall. So if you have a ponytail, take it out. And you're going to play your instruments. Just like stand against the wall, feet are against the wall too, like your heels. And you're gonna just like play a scale and see how you feel because all of us sort of, unless you're somebody who like never uses the internet, but if you're watching this, you are using the internet. Um, all of us tend to just lean forward too much. You know, we lean forward and we text, we lean forward and we look at our computers, we lean forward and we write things on a notepad, we lean forward and we look at our music stand. We're always leaning forward. And this exercise is meant to just like make you realize, oh, I can, I can go back a lot more. Even in this call, like right now, I am leaning forward. Because if I, if I sit up straight like this, you guys are just like looking up at me and that feels weird. So that's just an example of like how we do it without even realizing it. So make sure that you just stand against the wall or lie down on the floor. If you lie down on the floor, put your knees up so you're not like, so you're more comfortable. But try that out and just see how it affects your tone because I'm willing to bet it will have a good difference. So let me just open up the chat again. Um, do you guys have any questions about tone before I sort of wrap things up on my end? I'm gonna turn my sound off. Why is my internet slow? Should not be slow. But yeah, just feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. If I don't see it right now while I'm doing the live, I'm going to be checking this later because the replay is going to be up and available to you guys. So you could just let me know at any time if you have any questions. Um, but there you go. So before I go, there is your homework assignment. I just wanna mention that if you found this helpful and you're feeling like, wow, I have like a lot of things that I need to get advice on about my sound that I need um, to double check. I don't know if I'm doing this right. I don't know if I'm doing this right. If you're feeling like that, um, there's a couple options for you to get the help that you need. So the first option would be to, if you're a flute player, <laughs> Join us at Flute Day. So we're going to be talking about all of this stuff in Flute Day um, as it relates to flute. So that's one option. The other option, and this goes for no matter what instrument you play, um, we still are accepting people into our membership at Woodwind Academy. So the membership option at Woodwind Academy is $47 a month. Um, there is a arsenal of tone videos for your individual instrument that Anna and I have made specifically catered to the needs of adult woodwind players. We cover all of the most common questions asked. We explain everything to you in a really detailed way. So it's a really beautiful way to get personalized support without actually like paying for it with a private lesson. Um, so yeah, like a private lesson is like $90. <laughs> so that is like the price of two months of Woodland Academy. Um, so because we've taught so many people and had so many questions and seen so many people play and work with so many adults, like we kind of cover like everything. Um, but like also if you have additional questions while you're in the membership, you can still ask us in the community chat. You can upgrade to VIP and come to office hours. Um, but those are options that are available to you if you're feeling an itch, like I need a little bit more support, I need 
my questions answered, I'm ready to take that next step and invest in myself and my learning and just make playing my instrument not only just like a lot more fun, but a lot easier. Because with when it comes to me and Anna, like we don't want you guys spending hours and hours and hours practicing in the practice room, still feeling stuck, feeling like you don't have enough time, feeling like you're not improving. We try to make things as efficient as possible. We craft our lessons in a really efficient way so that if you only have 20 minutes, you can still reach your goals. If you only have 10 minutes, you can still reach your goals. If you're already spending an hour, um, we will craft that hour with you into a practice session that's actually going to really help you and is like working on the things that you actually need help with. So just let us know if you have any questions about all that. You can check out more information about Flute Day and more information about the membership um, on our website and I will post the link, the links for those below. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and let me know how the tone exercise goes. All right. Bye.